Hey guys, this is Billy from AdultChiller.com and today I want to talk about why you might be feeling a little pain or a little tension in your left hand. So I have three topics that we'll look at and just to keep in mind, the goal here is to develop soft, supple strength with the left hand. That for me was confusing right off the bat. I, you know, I'd have teachers saying, you've got to relax the left hand. And the more I thought about it, like, okay, well, if I just relax, like I can't hold down the notes. What, what does that even mean? So supple strength i thought of an analogy that i think really works if you've ever been on a subway or if you've been in an airport and you take that tram that goes from say the terminal to the baggage claim and and they you know they all they'll have like hangers to hold on to or they'll have rails and they say grab a hold of the sign if you've ever done the thing where you're like i don't want to touch that pole i'm just going to stand here and just balance that i think is a pretty good example of what we're talking about with the left hand because if you're in that situation if you just totally relax and stand there the minute the tram starts you're going to fall over okay because you're not prepared and if you get super psyched up and ready and you get really stiff that's going to make you fall over too because the slightest jolt and because you're so stiff you're going to tumble okay what you end up doing is you get kind of like a solid base very kind of solid foundation in your feet and then you want to just have kind of a loosey-goosey body that's ready to sort of roll with the punches as the tram you know lurches forward or turns or anything that's what we want I, I think our feet in that example would be what we want from our fingers so you need to have you know solid foundation good contact with you know the string the position but the rest of the hand has that kind of inherent flexibility in it. Alright, so number one is be like a spider. So does this look like your hand? Here I have, I'm playing notes and I've got the bulk of my hand is really far from the fingerboard and the fingers are straightened out, they're kind of flattened out and so I've just got this sort of a like a duckbill kind of shape with the hand going on. So when I talk about being like a spider, what when you have these flattened out fingers like this, what that generally is is stiffness in the joints of the fingers okay especially this this row of knuckles right here at the top of the hand those stiffen up and then suddenly your that kind of pushes your hand out away from the neck and then here you are way out here plain fourth fingers uh, is a nightmare plain in extensions is a nightmare it's just very uncomfortable in general so here's an exercise to kind of work on that what you want to do is promote flexibility in your knuckles so what I'm going to do is just kind of have a flat surface right now. I'll use my hand and I'm just going to drop the fingers of my left hand right into my palm and then I'm going to push down and allow the, that row of knuckles I was talking about, that row is going to sink down, okay? The important thing here is that if you look at the fingertips, they flex a little bit, but they're, my fingertips aren't sliding around as I, as I, you know, push down. The fingertips kind of maintain their position, and then you just sink down, and then because you're pushing down, something has to give, and what's going to give is, are the joints that we're looking for right there, okay? That was something I had to work on was I had, you know, especially the harder the piece was, the more I would kind of stiffen up in preparation which ironically made it harder and harder to play the harder pieces. All right, so number two is called focus on your framework, all right? Right now what I'm demonstrating is an approach to the cello in any hand position. Right now I'm in first position, but I'm so focused on maintaining half steps between my fingers and it creates a ton of tension in the top of my hand. It's kind of that, you know, Star Trek thing. Problem why this is so uncomfortable to try to keep perfect spacing, quote unquote, between your fingers, is that the second and third finger shares a tendon in our hand. It's just kind of how we're designed. And so keeping a big space between two and three at all times is going to lead to a lot of tension just because they don't want to be separated. They want to be together. So what I do and what I you know, tell my students to do is to focus on the framework. What I mean by that is in every time you have an established hand position on the cello, I'm going to focus on the placement of my first finger and my fourth finger. I'm talking about the lower neck right now. It's a little different in thumb position, okay? With my second and third finger, I'm going to just let them kind of hang out, okay? And the reason is 
if I play fourth finger and then third finger, for example, I'm going to let my second finger come along for the ride, okay? Nine times out of ten, because I don't want that extra stretch right in the middle of my hand. And you can, sometimes it, you can almost feel it all the way down the top of your hand if it really gets tired, okay? Likewise, if I play first finger and second finger right after, or if I play fourth finger and then second finger, my third finger is going to shade towards my second finger, okay? And that's fine with me because as long as my framework is established, then with two and three, I'm just going to place them as needed. Let's, you're playing a passage in D major and you're playing primarily first, third, and fourth finger. When I'm in that mode, I'm not worried about where two is. It doesn't have to hold a position. It's not even, if it's not going to be played soon, there's no reason to worry about it. I just want to have a very relaxed hand while I'm playing notes. Okay, so give two and three a little bit of a break. And finally, number three, pinky power. Okay, so I'm playing and I have a completely straightened out pinky finger. Okay, almost like it's a kickstand on a bicycle. Um, this creates a lot of tension. It was actually something that got me in a little bit of trouble tendonitis wise at some point so i know all about this and it is something you want to avoid at all costs the problem is unless you have the world's luckiest hand shape for most of us our pinkies are much shorter than the rest of our hand okay and keep in mind also along with having a short pinky a lot of us have a hand shape where there's kind of like this banana shape here so it's not even going straight across the hand the start of the pinky is starting lower, so that makes it even shorter in comparison to, say, the second finger, all right? So here's how to kind of back solve that and find a good position for your pinky before you even start playing. All right, so what we're gonna do to find our pinky position is I'm gonna take my hand and just put it on the side of the neck here, my left hand, so I have the middle finger touching, okay? Currently, if you look, <laughs> only the middle finger can touch. So to get one and three, to touch as well, I have to bend the middle finger, okay? So that bend allows the other two to connect, and now I have fingers one through three connecting on the neck. Now, look at my fourth finger. It's not, it's nowhere close. It's not even close yet, okay? This is the problem we have. So then, if I just keep bending the fingers, eventually, fourth finger can touch, and that's, so that's the concept you're gonna need. The fingers are bending to allow the fourth finger to get closer, and also the top of the hand is coming closer to the neck. That's what's going to allow your fourth finger to be able to play with, you know, a healthy bend in it. If you go to the extreme with making those, you know, like kind of tunnel fingers, maybe you need clearance on another string. This is kind of what that would look like, where the middle of the hand is really close into the neck. There's actually nothing wrong with playing this way. I tend to play somewhere in between the two, definitely not with my hand far away, because then my pinky is going to struggle. And I just don't want to, even if I can play the note in tune with the fourth finger, I don't want to ever have it flattened out in order to play, okay? That's just too much work on my tendon. I found that out the hard way. I hope you never find that out too. You might if you don't take care of it, okay? So you want to bring, sometimes it's also maybe thinking about this knuckle here, the first knuckle, and allowing that to get closer as well, so it's a little bit of rotation, depending on how much fourth finger you're gonna be playing in a passage. But in general, let the first three fingers bend a bunch and let the hand f come in towards the neck. That should help your pinky out a bunch. There you have it, that's my top three things to think about if you're battling a little bit of left hand tension or pain. If you want, go ahead in the comment section below. Let me know which of these three areas you're currently working on or currently, you know, resonate with your plane, things you want to work on. I'm just super curious. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much.